All right, Joey, what's the, what's the Astro story? Well, it's the same age as me, 1996. I went on a climbing trip with a friend and he had an Astro. It got really cold in Utah, so we both had to sleep in there. It didn't really have any sort of mods or any high top, so it was pretty crammed. Ever since then, I wanted an Astro, but I wanted to build a high top on it. Did you build the high top yourself? Yeah, so my friend Mike and I, we were planning to, to just crank it out in a weekend. That turned into several months of arduous grinding and welding and painting. The, the whole thing now stands at like six and a half feet on the inside. So pretty much anybody can stand up. Hey, my name's Joey White. This is my Chevy Astro van, 1996. There's a ton to cover in this video. I've been working on it for the last year and a half. I wanna cover all of it. So when I first got the van, I didn't wanna touch it until I had a good plan of what I wanted to do. So I started drawing a lot in drawing programs and, and I realized that I wanted a van that I could stand up in, at least in one section. I started doing some like rough drawings, got a, a basic idea of what I wanted to do. You cut the roof off in the same same weekend that you decided you wanted to do a high top. Yeah. So I cut it off Friday after work and the next day we started cutting steel. We built it all in place. So riveted flat bar all along the perimeter of the cut. And then from there, we were able to weld on to thicker steel and we welded a bunch of archways across the whole thing. So I have the max metal on the outside and then rigid foam insulation and then upholstered wall panels on the inside. You can stand on top in the uh, small section that's not covered by solar panel or roof vent. I've, I've set up a lawn chair up there and just chilled before. I got it to match the high top. Um, both of them are Raptor linered, full thick coat. He did an uh, epoxy primer. Up here, I have an escape hatch, which I actually got from a Palomino truck camper that I ended up demolishing. It's a long story. I had some of the windows and escape hatch and a bunch of other cool things that I salvaged from that. So I was able to get this Rhino Rack Sunseeker awning. It's just a, a nice little guy that I have bolted on there. Super easy to take in and out, great for sun. I might add a gutter at some point to make it really nice for rain. Normally this awning mounts on top of a roof rack, but I'm mounting it on a flat wall. So I had to bolt on the opposite side of this L-Track, and then there's a bolt on top and bottom. So I also ordered a lift kit from Journeys Off-Road. I added a ton of weight in the van, obviously with cabinets and stuff, so I ordered a five inch super lift or something like that. Back has much beefier leaf springs and the front has subframe blocks, so it actually just blocks up two inches in the front and then I got some a little bit bigger tires. So last summer I was getting 20 on the highway with the high top, um, so that's not bad and tons of weight. One of the tools we have in the shop and a skill I learned in high school was welding amongst the high top I also made a bunch of other additions to make the whole van a little bit more functional So I welded up this ladder with the leftover three-quarter from the high top I actually got this powder coated which is super nice just to make it last longer That's really good access to the roof to my to my lounge zone and to get to the solar panel or the max air fan If I need to as you can see, it's pretty simple up here. I have this 240 watt solar panel I think it's a retired house panel, but it's 240 watts and it powers my whole system really well. And then over here I have the Max Air fan, which was broken and I modified it, which you'll see in a little bit. That provides great circulation in the van. I might add like a little rack or just leave it open to put up a camp chair or something. I added a little rear door rack here. This came out of a T1N Sprinter van. Kinked it and bent it to fit the contour of the van. Cut out for a handle and then mounted my spare donut right here, which I took out for the gray water to fit in. So I have a gray water tank where this used to be. I had some two inch heel tube. Two inch was perfect to fit in the hitch. So I was like, why don't I just make a bike hitch now that I'm getting into mountain biking. I just decided to make a hangover mount to fit two bikes, typically going out with two friends. If not, I can throw a couple extras in the van. I added these Thule straps, which I was able to find at an outdoor store. They just slide perfectly into these tracks, which it was a shop hand-me-down. I, I went into a bike shop and just asked for some spare tubes if they had um, like trash tubes lying around, cut them, wrapped them around so they don't hurt my forks. The bike rack fits 29 inch wheels, which is pretty sick. I recently got an industrial sewing machine, which I'm super happy about. I made a bunch of different things for the van, but also for the bike. 
I've been making a few uh, bike bags for friends and stuff. So this holds snacks and tools and cleaning stuff and a paracord, a piece of paracord for um, my dog when we're on the streets. All right, so this is obviously the main entrance to, to my part-time house. So I wanted to design this space to be super functional for storage. Obviously the ability to stand up. I like to do some, some more complicated cooking. I took a lot of priority in designing a good kitchen cabinet. And then I also wanted to save room and figure out a good way that I could sit four people around a dining table. So I actually added swivels to these seats and I'll show you how all that setup works. Did you have to custom make these swivels? I bought truck or uh, tractor swivels from a tractor supply company. Um, so I cannot guarantee they are DOT approved, but they are very sturdy. I welded and through bolted in different places to the bottom of the seats. That's how you get them to swivel around. And then I have in this back corner mounts, which I welded up a uh, homemade lagoon. This guy goes in there. This guy goes on top, and I have these adjustable knobs, which are super cool. So you can change the height however you want to accommodate leg room. On this back wall, I was able to mount the table, so I just have this little pin right here, and then soft Velcro to hold it in place on these blocks, and then all you need to do is slide it out. Boom. I just mounted it on center, but you're able to Put it over here for just two people watching a movie on a laptop, play some Catan, who knows, whatever. Or I can bring it just over here for me to work at. Tighten it, nice and secure, but lots of versatility, lots of space. While we're here, let's talk about this elephant in the room here. So I have a very custom dashboard. The one that was here, was perfectly fine. I just decided I wanted to make something that kind of fit my like creative, weird aesthetic. But I also wanted a lot more storage because the thing didn't even have a glove box or anything like that. So this is just a good place I can throw my wallet, keys, little speaker, whatever. And I also wanted to add a lot of switch options and my own sweet missile switches <laughs> from Amazon. So I can connect to Bluetooth. And then right here is the switch for my backup camera right up here. Uh, so this was, I don't know, like 30 bucks on Amazon. These three don't do anything, <laughs> but uh, they're pretty cool. I have wires hanging down so I could wire up anything else if I wanted to. I relocated the AC to right here. So I have all those settings and then obviously USB for phone, 12 volt socket for other charging. And then I got these Bose speakers from my friend's boat. And they're a lot better than the uh, 25 year old speakers that are in here. So I added this one little guy for every time I get in or out of my van collecting my belongings. Just putting the dining table away and we can talk about the bench seat. The lounge setup was a, a big priority of mine. So I wanted to make sure that it was comfortable even if it took up a little bit more space. These cushions, just to talk about the, the top section first, these were Pendleton blankets that a client had upholstered to their ceiling. And these are the cutoff scraps that I was able to use. They're nice wool cushions and they just come off. <laughs> and then in here, I obviously have a lot of storage for camping gear, got my tent stoves, and then some van essentials. So I have my jack and some jumper cables, extra water, sleeping bag if it gets cold, bike pump down in there. You can actually see down in there, there's a big cutoff switch for the battery for all the electronics. Up here, you can see all of my systems. So I have the solar charger on the left side. We're in the shade right now. It's an old battery. Give me a break. Got my fuse panel for all my uh, 12 volt systems. Inverter, which I can turn on if I want to charge a laptop or anything like that. And then over here, I have a boat shore power. So this is a Pro Mariner shore power charger. So I actually have that run to a port under the van where I can uh, hook up an extension cord and go on grid to charge up my batteries. Just below that, I have an ACR charge relay for charging off my alternator. Added a little circle window here. I like to have this open when I'm driving just so I can look over my shoulder and see out. Um, I was debating just covering it for privacy and all that, but I think 
the circle adds some some cool flair to the interior design. You can see the back of the bench has this little extension up here. It's a nice tight fit, so you can just shove stuffables back here. Some gear, these are hammock straps, stove, toiletries, all that stuff. It's also a good place to store a folded up laptop or phones or whatever I'm charging because the outlet and USB are also right here. Overhead light switches right here. This one is for the main dining area and then you also have the one for the kitchen area. So that's just a good source of light for when you're cooking. So this guy pretty much always on blue for water, water pump. I have a 12 volt water pump that runs up to this faucet up here, which I'll show you in a minute. And then down here is the water light. You can actually see the tank illuminated. Not a lot of water right now, but you can kind of see the level and just gauge when you need to refill. Also down in this cabinet is my 200 amp hour battery strap down. Fit perfectly in this little zone and I, uh, I don't need a ton of storage in here. I wanted a pretty functional way to get up into the sleeping area. So I made a kind of rudimentary ladder. I usually just take a couple steps and then you can also step on the counter to get up. But I added three quarter inch bamboo to make the step a little more comfortable and cargo net so that I could store a ton of stuff in here. So I have biking gear, don't even have anything in here yet, and uh, a lot of clothes storage. So most of my like jackets, sweaters, and then socks and underwear. This is where I keep my headlamp for easy access. Cargo nets are just super useful. I could max this out if I wanted to. And uh, yeah, it's great for when I'm driving, nothing falls out. So this is the shoe zone. So I can put a few pairs up here. I don't need a ton, but this is with the new industrial sewing machine I just got. Because my roof or my ceiling is actually like four inches higher than a regular Astro because I cut the roof. I wanted something to secure the slider door track and also be a functional storage space. So I made this this box right here. So it's great for stuffables. So I have my puffy jacket, hats. This is my uh, little Carhartt dog jacket. Super easy, pull it out, slide it across. Simple little curtain. Um, so when the slider is closed, it's, it makes it easier to change in here. And then uh, putting it away, super convenient you just clip it into the carabiner obviously this is my galley cabinet um, I have my fridge stored down here big 12 volt guy stores all my stuff you can freeze ice cream in here if you want to ice co it's basically the same as a Dometic but half the price um, that just tucks away back in there you can also access it from the back this guy is just a little pantry storage where i keep most of my uh, non-refrigeratable food tea baking stuff canned goods all that jazz so this is my uh, standing room only kitchen great little stainless sink took me forever to find that thing this is some some nice formica left over from one of the builds. I had to piece it together. And then I have an expanding countertop, which is one of my favorite additions here. This allows you to put the stove out here or over here and have a lot more prep space, but also be able to close it and get out this door and have this as open space. You can have one person standing here cutting while another person is over there cutting other things. <laughs> So this is just a Turflow plastic faucet. It's really versatile and cool. And it's uh, also 12 volt powered, so it seals itself. It's got extreme power. Over here, I actually have two super nice deep drawers. Most of my pots and pans go in here. Plywood bamboo bottom there. And then uh, most of my other silverware, cliff bars, ramen. Over here, if you can see, I have a cheap paper towel holder, but I got this nice bungee cord, so boom. Take it off, replace it when you uh, go through a lot of paper towels super fast. So I got this um, big cargo net just for whatever storage I want. So I've, I've stored extra pillows there before, sleeping bag. Down here, I've got a big bomber piece of L-Track into the metal of the car. So you can hang campo bags, all kinds of goodies. I'll probably get a nice campo bag and put it there. I've got storage for my stove. Pull that guy out, open this guy. Tons of space for it. Super clean stove. That's my girlfriend who I live with. One of the things that I got from the truck camper was this um, 
this cool little window. So this was actually the window that went from the camper to the truck. So the truck window could also open. So it's just a nice little rectangular window. It slides closed and it's got screen. So if I'm in a state that has bugs, oh, there's a bug. And then this little curtain right here, just to make it all private in here. And you can have super good circulation from here through the high top out the um, escape hatch over there. Well, this is what my high top skin is made of. Painted aluminum with a, like a plastic core. It's gonna make a great whiteboard material so I can write or draw or whatever I want on there. This is a little gooseneck lamp, which is perfect for doing dishes, especially when all the other lights are out. Like if somebody's sleeping up here, I can do dishes super loudly so that they can sleep. Up here, you'll see the roof vent. So this is a Max Air fan. It was haunted. Basically what I decided to do was just rip out out the electronics that came with it and then make my own switches. So I have an on off switch, which is a dimmer. So this is a 12 volt light switch. And then over here is actually a three position rocker switch. So I can switch it to in or out flow. And then I set it to in and then the flow is coming in for if it's hot in here and I wanna get circulation going, whatever. And then I can switch it. And then that's great for cooking when I need to get all the, I had trouble on this last time. When I want to get the steam and cooking juices out of the ceiling, I can also speed it up. And I think it's on the high setting or I can slow it down. You can actually go way slower than the actual Max Air, I think. It doesn't like that though. It's definitely tight up here, but once you're situated, it's a super long, comfortable bed. I got this custom mattress done from B Furnishings. Cool map lights from Amazon, they're like 25 bucks. You can actually switch between red and bright white. You can dim them. And uh, my favorite feature is that they also have a USB on them. So I can charge my phone when I'm up here and I don't have to leave it way down there. So this is a Sirocco, I think that's how you say it, um, boat fan, three power settings and uh, when that back window is open and my escape hatch is open, I get super good flow. Have you actually ever used it? I have climbed out of it before. For what purpose? No purpose. <laughs> purpose, no purpose. Um, but it is, it's also great having the screen so that you are bug free and you have a, like a super good breeze when you're in here. That's like six and a half feet. Pretty much anybody can sleep up here. How wide is it? It's a little bigger than a twin. Um, I actually have to use king size sheets to reach the front and then the sides just tuck under. Is it comfortable? It's very comfortable. So it's a three inch custom mattress, super nice foam. And then I also have a mattress topper. I didn't want to sacrifice too much space. Like I, I can't sit up, but it's a very comfortable sleeping place. And it's super nice having a dedicated sleeping zone so that you don't have to make your bed every night. Like that's terrible. <laughs> This ceiling right here is reclaimed oak flooring from my friend's living room. So his house was getting demolished and they were rebuilding. So all of this was going to end up in a landfill anyway. I wasn't accustomed to the automatic locks. So all of the doors have to be locked manually. And one day I just left the back door unlocked on accident and somebody went in and stole my bike and my longboard. It wasn't fun. Still manual, but I decided to make my own locking mechanism. So I bent this piece of steel to be a handle and then on the inside of the door where the key locks the door, I welded on little tabs where I could mount this aluminum dowel lock. So when it's down, it's locked obviously. And when it's up, you can unlatch it with this uh, tab, which is also just welded onto the, the piece in the door. So I thought it was a pretty simple way to be able to open it from the inside and not have to use the key. On the back of the galley cabinet, we got my little custom broom holder because they don't sell anything like this anywhere. So I heated up a piece of PVC and got uh, my broom to clip in there. So just a little tiny broom, bristles up always. And then you got rear access for the fridge. So you can come in here, take the fridge out, take it into your house, load it up with everything for the weekend in Baja. <laughs> and then we got the, the fill port and the shower port back here. So this guy comes down. You hook up the hose, blast away. And that's an outdoor shower? Outdoor shower, so you can hang it off. I strapped it onto here before. Great little shower holder. Mostly what I've used it for is rinsing off bikes or surfboards before putting them in. So I don't have a surfboard with me, but I have put my 8.7 longboard in through here. So you can actually fit it up through 
and then if you put a towel across the bed, you can slide it right up on top. You could store like 10 surfboards in there if you wanted to. All right, let's look under the van and talk about the gray water tank. So this is a 15 gallon gray water tank I got off Amazon. I had to drill my own fill and drain ports. And then I built this whole aluminum bracket out of tube aluminum that we had left over in the shop. And then I also have these straps just to keep it from rattling. So I just have to turn the ball valve. Don't have a lot of water in there, as you can see, but that's how I can dispose of it. So if I'm in a safe place, I can dump it into a garden or something like that. Um, and it's just this flexible hose that tucks right up under there. It's pretty low profile out of the way. Thanks for watching this video about my 1996 Astro van. I've put a lot of time, a lot of long weekends into this van. It's crazy that I, I just got it a year and a half ago. It had 65,000 miles on it. It was pretty mint condition. I've already beat it up a little bit and uh, put a lot of, a lot of myself into it. And uh, I'm, I'm glad I get to share that with you guys.